This can be a dangerous teaching, but it's a biblical teaching. It is a teaching that will bring you joy. Our God is a God of joy. We don't serve a crabby God, a capricious God. Jesus prayed that we might have the joy that is in Him. Jesus is a joyful God. We should be too, and that's what He wants for us. He will help us to have that joy when we look at sin rightly and not exclusively. When we do, when we're perpetually looking at sin in ourselves, oh, oh, you just become such a drag because you're blaming other people. You have no assurance. You have no zest, no zeal to serve the king. Why? Because I'm such a rotten worm of a person which you are, but that's all you focus on, and you become meh. That is the theological term for it. Or if you are only focusing on the sins of others, let me tell you, you're not going to get invited to a lot of parties. You're the person who walks in and people go, oh, great. Why? You start to really get annoyed with people. You disdain them. You're critical. You eye roll them. You're looking at them. Why? Because all you see them as are sinners. Are they sinners? Yes. But that's all you see. That's all you focus on. Either way, focusing on sins in yourself exclusively, the sins in others exclusively, the fruit is downright rotten. So, what should we be focusing on? More. It's not that we never think about sin. It's not that we're not aware of sin. But there's something that God wants us to focus on more. What is that thing? Well, it happens to be the thing that the Bible talks about from Genesis to Revelation. It happens to be the thing that the universe was created for. That thing that we're to be focusing on is Jesus, specifically his work for you that your sins would be washed away, separated as far as the east is from the west, cast into the deepest part of the ocean where God remembers them no more. Why do you? You should be aware of your sin. You need to know when it happens. You should be willing to listen to somebody who puts their hand on your shoulder and says, hey, friend, brother, sister, I got to talk to you about an area in your life. And you hear about your sin, you're aware of your sin, you repent of your sin, you talk to God about your sin, you can even cry over your sin. But don't stay there. Don't stay there. Don't, don't be a sin wallower. Instead, go, wow, and Jesus died for me anyway. He took the stripes that I deserve because of that sin. He had the crown of thorns nailed into his skull for that sin. He did that for me. And when you are aware of your sin, but turn and focus more on what Jesus did for you, a sinner, the fruits of that are radical. Here are a few. You will have more love for God. Is your love cold for God right now? Remember your sin, but more than that, remember what Jesus did for you, and it's going to cause you to stand in awe, to stand in amazement. He, he would do that for me. He loves me that much. When you focus on him, more than you focus on your sin, your love for him will grow because you're focusing on the one that is so amazing and it's such great good news. I mean, seriously, you watch those TV shows all the time where it's, here's the bad news. This person got murdered. That person got killed. There was a slaying in this part of town. And that's just Atlanta, by the way. <sighs> that's a drag. But if you perpetually heard about a hero, a rescuer, a savior, you'd go, hmm. That's what happens when you focus on Jesus. You'll have humility because you're going to realize, what? God did that for me. You see, genuine humility doesn't come from going, I'm such a bad sinner. I'm such a bad sinner. That's a good start. But recognizing he's an amazing savior who would save a wretch like me, how can I be arrogant when he does that for me? You'll have gratitude. You'll have joy unspeakable. When you focus on him more than your sin, you're going to have more kindness for people. Instead of being crabby, how can you be crabby at other people? When you realize that Jesus died for them, that he came to seek and to save them too, that you are the chief of sinners that Jesus died for, I'm going to be mean to somebody else. You will have more assurance. Wow, Jesus really did do this for me when you're focusing on Jesus and not your sin. Gentleness with other people. Instead of shouting, crabbing, carping, harping, eye rolling, uh, ing, you're going to have gratitude for people. 
You're going to have more gratitude for God and what he has done. You'll be filled with thanksgiving. You're going to have freedom. You're not going to get caught in little conscience issues that aren't sins at all. I know that can be dangerous, but it's not if rightly understood. There's freedom. We're the grace people. To live in liberty, that actually means something, and you'll understand that better, and you'll live there better if you're focusing more on Jesus and not so much on your sin. Yes, there can be dangers in this, but they take care of themselves when we're thinking through issues in a gospel-centered kind of way. You're going to worship more. How's your worship life? You're going to be praying more fervently and with more gratitude. You're going to have patience with people. You are going to be at peace with other folks and at peace with yourself. No more am I at war with God, and you're going to grow in sanctification. That is how you use sin sinlessly. That is how you grow in holiness. Not by never looking at your sin, but not by focusing on your sin, but instead focusing on the one who died to save you from your sin. Jesus.